you don't want to sit in front of a consecrated space because that will attract a totally different kind of energy towards you. It could be detrimental to you in many different ways. It takes a lot of effort and resources to make such videos. So please support us by watching the video till the end and share it with as many people as you can. If there's an energetic situation, you always are asked to cross your legs, not to stretch your legs in the direction. Essentially because you can receive anything that comes towards you in many different ways. The yogic intention always is to receive it from the higher aspects of your life. You know there is anahata, which is the meeting of two triangles. Below that is Manipuraka, Swadhisthana and Muladhara, which are all chakras representing different aspects of survival process. Because this is ultimate ecstasy, this is realization, this is power, this is love and these sections, these triangles intersecting. When there is a consecrated space, what it means is there is a powerful energy which has the possibility of transforming you. That energy must come to you always from the highest possibility that you can receive. You can receive from your sahasrar. It would be too fantastic, that is the reason the moment any Indian person goes into a temple, first thing is they want to expose this. They keep it wet, a wet head because they are hoping this energy will enter here. Starting from the highest chakra, which is the Sahasrar. When your energies are focused here, you feel incredibly joyful and ecstatic for no particular reason. Moving down to Agna, if your energies are centered there or you've reached that state, you gain intellectual realization which brings inner peace, regardless of external circumstances. Next is Vishuddhi, where dominant energies make you very powerful. Anahata follows where creativity flourishes if your energies are predominant there. Dominant energies in Manipuraka, which is about three-fourth inches below your navel, make you a proactive doer capable of accomplishing many tasks. Swadhishtana is next, where pleasure-seeking tendencies become dominant in your life. Finally, in the Mooladhara, which is between your anal outlet and genital organ, if your energies are dominant there, basic needs like food and sleep take precedence in your life. You don't want to sit with your legs open like this in front of a consecrated space because that will attract a totally different kind of energy towards you and that will work for you in a completely different way which is not necessarily beneficial to you, it could be detrimental to you in many different ways. That's a reason when you sit in any space where you think there is power, there is energy, you always cross your legs and sit because you want to close the lower part of the body. Even food, I'm telling you, if you sit in front of food, one advantage you have is there is a table between you and the lower parts of your body. But if you sit with food but with legs open, like many people are standing and eating, there are many negativities to this because you must understand the longing for food is not just in your mouth. Entire body is longing for it, entire body. Similarly, there are other kinds of longings in our body, they must go through the right route, then only it… life works out in a certain way, otherwise you will distort life. So keeping your legs crossed whenever you see a powerful form is a very important thing. Food is a very powerful thing. I would say eighty percent of your health depends on this, how much you're in tune with the earth. Eighty percent. Eighty percent of your chronic ailments can just vanish simply because you kind of found a little rapport with the earth on which you're walking or sitting right now. Those of you who have very unstable bodies, that is you tend to fall sick very easily and you know, constantly those kind of things. If you just get off your cot and sleep on the floor, you will see it'll make a big difference. Just that much, just maybe eighteen inches away you are, just get eighteen inches closer. You will see it'll make a big difference in terms of reorganizing the system. Adding to what has already been emphasized by Sadhguru, why is sitting on the floor so important? Let's understand this with a study. In a 2014 study involving 2002 individuals aged 51 to 80, participants underwent a sit and rise test to assess their ability to rise from the floor without support. Six years later, researchers found a significant link between unassisted rising and mortality risk with higher scores indicating greater survival likelihood. Traditional chair sitting can cause discomfort and musculoskeletal issues 
due to unnatural positioning. While floor sitting aligns the body naturally, potentially relieving strain on muscles and the joints. Regular floor sitting promotes hip flexibility, essential for mobility and stability. Establishing a habit of floor sitting for at least 30 minutes daily gradually improves hip flexibility, stability and overall well-being. In contemporary society, the notion of comfort often revolves reclining and slouching. However, such postures can cause discomfort to our internal organs, hindering their proper function. This is especially evident after consuming a full meal and reclining in a chair. A common scenario during travel, it's estimated that extensive travel in a reclined position, such as in a car, could potentially reduce the lifespan by several years due to the strain it places on our organs. Sadhguru says that if you travel travel 1000 kilometers on a reclining chair, your lifespan will come down by at least 3 to 5 years. Isn't this alarming? Contrary to popular belief, maintaining an upright posture isn't solely about avoiding discomfort. Rather, it's rooted in the understanding that true comfort is achieved through proper bodily alignment.